This is GKW. Welcome to another edition of Good Karma Wrestling. I'm Gabe Neitzel from ESPN Milwaukee. With me, as always, from ESPN West Palm, Brian Rowitz. Catch him on ESPN in ESPN 1000 in Chicago. He is Jonathan Hood. All right, boys, we've got a lot to cover this week as we continue to deal with the fallout of WrestleMania, plus AEW gets ready for Dynasty this weekend in St. Louis. But where we begin is the fallout from the longest story that I can remember anybody in professional wrestling telling, and that, of course, is the Bloodline story. Nowhere to be seen is Roman Reigns, and we found out today because of Kiki Palmer, who, if you're unfamiliar, is an actress and singer uh, who is on a set of a movie that is also being shot with Roman Reigns. Roman ain't coming back anytime soon. So the question becomes, with the bloodline, is the bloodline story still in the third inning? How far along are we with the bloodline story? Uh, Maybe not the third inning, but definitely we're in the middle innings. Because we because we have talked about this before. As I told you guys, more Samoans are coming. It yep. took a while, right? <laughs> but I was saying more Samoans are coming. And we got Tamatanga. And and we're going to get Jacob Fatu. And we're going to have more Samoans coming. So um, third inning, no. Okay, but it feels more like fourth or fifth inning. Because this can evolve into women that are Samo- of Samoan heritage. That whole thing, what, when we saw that family tree, at that press conference in Las Vegas, and how so many Samoans, how so big so it big. is. It just it just shows you, uh, Brian, that this can go on for a while without Roman. Right. That's the thing. Like you mentioned Jacob Fatu, things like that. And you have different dynamics now, like Jay Uso mentioning Jimmy on Monday and what happened there. I feel like we see an Uso's reunion. You have The Rock out there. You have Roman out there. I tend to agree. I feel like we're not at the seventh inning stretch yet. Like we still have a long way to go. And I feel like the goal for them is to get to Mania 41, wherever that might be, to where we eventually get to Rock Roman. Because we haven't gotten there yet. Like there are still a lot of layers to this, which is just insane since it's 2024. And this has been going a very long time. As you continue to add more people from the family and more people from the bloodline, it makes me think, yeah, I mean, early middle innings maybe. I mean, this can go on for a long time. There are a number of different angles that you can continue. And even though Roman's not going to be around, the reports are he is still going to have a say in in what the storylines and things of that nature are going to be. And especially as long as Paul Heyman's involved, like we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we talked about some of the best storytellers in professional wrestling. And there's a reason why Paul Heyman went in and it's because he's been one of the best storytellers. I trust the bloodline story in his hands. And as they continue to add more and more pieces, um, I can kind of see it becoming, you know, when, when you look at what Bullet Club is in New Japan Pro Wrestling, like it's it's still an, an ongoing part of what New Japan Pro Wrestling does. Now, a lot of the members that founded it, that were originally a part of it, leaders you know, that we've seen over the course of the years, they're not there anymore, but they pass the torch to the next person and you know, the Bullet Club still exists. I can see, I don't see the bloodline going anywhere anytime soon. I mean, I don't see necessarily them you know, in the main event, unless one of these PLEs, they happen to main events because Cody's doing like a tag match or whatever. But I, I can see them, you know, not necessarily around the two major championships in WWE, but I can still see it being a big part of WWE storytelling because as as you pointed out, Jay Hood, that, that family tree that we saw in Vegas is massive. And there are plenty of people in that... Um, in that family, they can continue to bring in and continue to tell captivating stories with. They had it set up at WWE World, the whole thing. Oh, they did? Yes. Oh, like they wow. had the tree. They had a, a table that you could sit at the head of. It was part of the interactive exhibit in Philly. And the other thing is, like, they're sort of making other stars where we talk about wins and losses and how they don't really matter in the WWE World. Solo Sokoa, who doesn't win matches, is now all of a sudden looked at as a badass heel. Now, all of a sudden, Except, you can he, won, he won against Cena. Right, but has he won since then? Because I don't think any win since then. But, no. like, you can have Solo, Tamatonga, Jacob Fatu versus the Usos and Roman main event of pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. Boy, boy what they had to pay for for Ancestry.com to make that whole family <laughs> tree. <laughs> had to be expensive. Yeah, probably. Had, had to be expensive for this to happen. <laughs> I, uh, I, I will say there's two things. One, we saw Solo Sokoa speak. 
Yeah. And so and so Sokoa took the almost took the reins of all of it to so to, to use a phrase. Took the reins and started speaking and made Paul Heyman back down. The other thing is is that we see this guy from New Japan come out of nowhere and he fit in sonically just like that. It wasn't one of these things we had to go to NXT and had to kind of bide his time. No, he got right into the storyline. Mm-hmm. So you, I just feel like more and more are coming uh, just based on that. And the other thing too, guys, is that yeah, the storyline can extend, and it can extend without being in the main event. Mm-hmm. Cody is in the main event against whomever he's going to face, but the Bloodline storyline can continue on Raw and SmackDown with it being at the top of the card. They also haven't like broken case of emergency like the old timers like we haven't seen rakishi come back we haven't seen like a haku and things like that like they still have that in their back pocket if they want it like if we're comparing to baseball like those bench players those utility guys like you pull rakishi up there in the seventh inning to you know take an at bat like they can still do something like that yeah yeah and then i mean you mentioned the women obviously rock's daughters down in nxt yeah. that can be become a part of this at some point like there there, there are just it, it is professional wrestling is steeped in tradition <laughs> in this family's tradition like it and they can just continue to roll on and again roman can go off and shoot his movies the rock can go off and be the owner of the ufl shoot his movies run his production company and they can come back periodically to elevate whatever is going on within the bloodline and i'm assuming that this bloodline civil war part two that is going on currently is going to eventually end up in the rock and Roman being on separate sides of this thing. And that's how we get to rock Roman. We still have to get to rock Cody is this rock going to be a part of the bloodline when we get to rock Cody, because that's something I think they heavily teased when the, you know, last Monday night when we saw the rock on Monday night raw. So there are just so many different directions that this thing can go and it could just kind of chill in the background and still be compelling and still have a lot of fun angles. And the crowd still loves it. I mean, the crowd is still behind. And again, Paul Heyman is going to be beloved everywhere he goes, respected everywhere he goes. And again, I, I will trust this story to go as long as it is, whether it's another six months, a year, 10 years. If Paul Heyman's involved, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a leash. I'm going to give it all the runway it needs because I think they're going to be able to win. Well, he's his own story of it now. Like, I know he's just sort of part of the tree by marriage. I guess you can consider it that way. Like, where he goes. Because he was with Solo on Friday, but he was scared of Solo. And, like, is he loyal to Roman? Is he loyal to The Rock? Like, and you never know what he's doing. That's his own interesting story every week now. Yeah, with, with Paul Heyman, it's wherever the wind blows, right? Sure, yeah. There is, there is no Roman, there is no Rock. So he's going to have to be afraid of Solo Sokoa and for Tamatanga. Here's the thing that's interesting. Uh, we come to find out after WrestleMania that Jimmy Uso is Marty Jannetty. Uh, because, I mean, as, as, as great as main event Jay Uso is, and Jimmy Uso is the one that gets attacked, you know that they're going to have to come back together. Because Jimmy as a single, apparently, Gabe, does not work. Apparently not. I mean, he's the weakest link out of all of them. Oh, by the way, while we're talking, uh, Brian, check out cage match of Solo Sokoa matches. I know you're wondering how many matches. So he's looked up at the lights at least, if you look it up, I think 40 times against LA Knight. He's lost a ton. So he he's fuck, he goes from losing, like, a, I mean, all across the board, lost against LA Knight a ton. And so now he goes from that to being the leader of the bloodline 2.0 for now. It doesn't matter in that company wins and losses. Like, that's what it comes down to. Don't listen to Jesse James. Road Dog's <laughs> a piece of crap. But that's what they're telling us. His last win, um, he'd have to be on the Keep left scrolling. side. That Keep would scrolling. be defeats. Yep, I'm still scrolling. <laughs> and he's still on the right side. Oh, Solo Sokoa beats John Cena at Crown Jewel. That was in 2023, guys. That was November yeah, I'm aware. 4th. That was a I don't long know, time I mean, ago. I, I don't know how many of those were televised. I mean, that, that's uh-huh. part of the other thing. A lot of those are house shows, right? Um, and he had, I mean, he's he's kind of been built as this un, this big badass from day one. Like it took him a long time to have that first solo televised loss, and then when he did, then they just piled him on. Oh, and eight took on him television a, since the Cena win. Yeah, okay. and 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 on the road TV, you're still losing, right? Because because uh, on the road, you're supposed to be building up characters. They were building up LA Knight through Solo Sokoa. Somebody oh, got to yeah. take the pinfall. It's solo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, AJ no. Styles, LA Knight, there's a, there's a lot of defeating him there. Yes, from Rio Rancho, New Mexico to Manchester, New Hampshire. He's he's <laughs> yeah. been taking the pinfall a lot. Yeah, but when's the last time Jimmy won? 
Oh. Well, I, I mean, like, so there's no value in him as a single. Yeah. I mean, that, that's I mean, what I'm saying. Is, like, if yeah. if we're choosing the two, who's who's kind of splitting off and being the leader of the bloodline 2.0? Like, the option, to me, the option's pretty clear. It ain't Jimmy. No, yeah, it's been a while also. There's going to be a lot of scrolling here. Also, <laughs> side note, our company, uh, the Firewall Blocks, cagematch.com. I have to do this on my phone. Not sure what the issue is there. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk to IT. <laughs> That's fine. We, we, we need it for research purposes. <laughs> Pratik, what's wrong with cage match? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pratik. Jimmy Uso's we'll take- last win uh, came on September 29th of 2023 over Carl Anderson. Everyone remembers that match on SmackDown, right? You guys didn't have that in your match of the week? Salad 207 on that match. Oh, doctor. <laughs> Sacramento got to enjoy that one. Yeesh. <laughs> All right. We move on to some of the other <laughs> top stories in the world of professional wrestling because Carl Anderson versus Jimmy Uso ain't it. So we move on to our other top three stories. We like to call it the three count here on GKW. What do we got this week, Brian? All right. Let's talk some WWE contract news. PW Insider reporting still no new deal for Drew McIntyre. That is set to expire in five to six weeks. PW Insider also reporting about eight weeks left on Becky Lynch's current deal. They are saying it's a priority for the company to get a new deal. Speaking of Becky, her husband, Seth Rollins, his deal set to expire in 2024. Rank them most to least likely to leave the WWE. Becky Lynch, Drew McIntyre, or Seth Rollins? At this point, I think the most likely would have to be Drew. I I don't think any one of these three are going anywhere. But at this point, I have a hard time imagining Becky and Seth, and and we we can still rank them, but I just feel like they're going to be lifers, right? Like, especially Becky, like as big as she has gotten with her book that just came out, as important as she is, Drew has left already once. Granted, it was, he was in the middle of not being booked well. He was in the three-man band. He was, you know, before he eventually left, built himself back up into something and then came back and had this really impressive run and quite possibly doing some of the best work, if not the best work he's done over the last handful of months in the run up to and into WrestleMania. So I would say Drew seems like the most likely because, well, he's left before. He's seen that you can survive outside WWE. So I would say Drew the most likely. It's funny because I have Drew as the least likely. Really? Yeah. I just think that out of the four, he's doing the best work. And I think that we've come to an agreement that Drew's doing the best work of his career as this troll. Not even a heel, but as a troll. I think there's value into that. I think that uh, to write him off now would be a mistake. I definitely would try to re-up him. And I think he could be empowered to be the heavyweight champion at some point because he just keeps being in in the cycle. He keeps getting meaningful uh, time on TV. I have Drew as least likely. I would uh, release him. I would not. I agree. I have him as most likely, though, because I feel like he realizes he has the power. I feel like the WWE from a TKO side, they would have already re-signed him. And I feel like there's something right now where they're like, do we need to invest this money? They feel like they are bigger. They're the shield in NFL terms where it doesn't matter who comes through. They can make their next Drew McIntyre. So are they going to overpay for him? Are they going to say, all right, go do what you got to do. Have fun at Wembley, but it ain't going to work here for you. It's funny because for most likely, I have your buddy, Natty Neidhart. Okay. You talked at WrestleMania. Could you yeah. imagine her? Could you imagine her in the indies? Like Natty Neidhart needs to let go of WWE. Yeah. She's a, she's pretty much an, um, an ambassador now, more so than yeah. a wrestler. She I mean, said, and I know she, yeah. If you check out the interview on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Karma Wrestling, she flat out said, she's like, oh, I would love to wrestle in Japan and wrestle some of those shows because she went to some of those shows in Philly. She went to the Stardom show just because. She went to Blood Sport. So she is essentially, I feel bad using the term jobber, so we'll go enhancement talent, but that's all she is in the WWE right now. She is. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. And, you know, if, if that's what she wants to do, like, I think she could be successful doing it. Like yeah. she's good enough in the room. Like she's done everything she can do in WWE. Like, yeah. If, unless she just wants to still be there and be an ambassador, almost the way that, you know, um, Titus O'Neil has really become ambassador more than a wrestler. Just be that on the women's side. If that's what she wants to do good on her. But if she want, yes, I, she would succeed and, and yes. be out with, with, without a doubt. 
she but can spend it, more time. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and I was gonna I was just gonna move on from from Natty, but you know, it, Seth Rollins also I would say. I wonder if with all the injuries he has, if he's going to get the money that he wants out of his next WWE deal. See, he's someone I look at as like the lifer. I have him least likely. I think Becky is more likely just from a like challenging herself standpoint. Like, yes, she had indie dates, but she sort of came up through NXT. Like Rollins has done all that. Like he did the ring of honor thing. Like I feel like Becky just being curious of, Hey, what can I do out there? Like she's wrestled in Japan before she was a big star. But to go to main event of Wembley, to go show up at the Tokyo Dome and work a match, like I wonder if there's any sort of fire there that makes her want to go, all right, let's see what else is outside these walls. If I ever want to see one of the two between in that family, Seth or Becky on the outside, and it would be Becky. Mm. It would be Becky because Seth seems like now a WWE style WWE yes. lifer. Because I saw and I saw him in the on the Indies, guys. I right. saw him at Ring of Honor as Tyler mm-hmm. Black, and I, I wasn't impressed. I just thought, just another guy. Then he became comes a superstar in WWE. But I, I think that if I was to see someone on the outside, it would be Becky. So I, I have Natty Neidhart at the top, Seth and Becky kind of in the middle, and then Drew uh, least likely at this point in time because of his value. But, I mean, for Seth Rollins, I've seen it all I need to see. Right. One thing about Seth Rollins, guys, is that I can't relate to him. I don't know because he's been so many different characters – I don't think I've ever seen the real whatever Seth Rollins is supposed to be. It's always it's always dressed up. It's always the dye in the hair. It's always the crazy laugh. And I haven't seen outside of just the, some of the interviews a candid moment as a wrestler of Seth Rollins. I can't really relate to who he is. Yeah, I feel like the only candid stuff you see of him as a Bears fan on Sundays. On yeah. social media. <laughs> That's the extent of it. Oh, he so hates you the Bears. can relate, Jay. Right? Yeah, see? <laughs> He hates the Bears as a fan. That's what you know about Seth Rollins. Only difference is when the Bears lose, I still love football. All right, that's <laughs> <laughs> But like I, I to guess... the Becky point, like her going out there, like that's exciting. Like I don't know if it's controversial to say. I think she's the best wrestler of the four horsewomen, and to see her challenge herself, like that could be really fun to see. Wow, really? You think she's the? I, I guess I haven't really thought about. I mean, I can't believe I haven't like ranked the four of them. But like, when I think of the best horsewomen match of all time, I think of Sasha and sure. Bailey in NXT, right? Like, so I guess I, yeah. I guess I just default there of like, okay, these are the four they have best to offer. And though, so I, I've I've always naturally kind of put Bailey on the top of the list, and she is she's lost a little bit, I would say with the knee injuries and some of the things that she's done over the years, although she showed at mania that she still has that in her. Um, we haven't seen Mercedes recently, um, uh, because of her injuries, obviously same thing with, with Charlotte. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I did not have Becky as number one on my list of the horsewomen I go in terms Becky, of best wrestlers. Yeah. In terms of sheer wrestling, I go Becky, Mercedes, Bailey, Charlotte. Oh, oh, oh. R.I.P. to your mentions. I'm just saying. Charlotte's <laughs> a little overrated. Oh. Listen, oh, but not, not, you know what? I can separate the company from Charlotte. Just because she's been a part of a hot potato title doesn't mean that she's less than now. She's sure. had classics. You know she's had classics. She and by the way. One, but let's hit one moonsault ever. How about that? It's part of the repertoire. But she misses 90% of the time. Well, that that's that's the equivalent of Flair never being going to the top rope and never hitting anything. Uh, that's, yeah. that, that, that's, so that, that's that's what that is. Right. It's, it's in her DNA. Like she yes. can't help it. It's not on her. All right, I've never yes. thought about it that way. It's a good point. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, David Flair did the same thing. He missed. Well, he just missed. Yeah. Uh, but but the, the point is though is like you know a Flair always misses a move, right? Yeah. That's what it is. It's interesting. We should do that one day when we take a really good look at I mean, hey, by the way, put her forth is no shame. No. All four of them can work. All four of them can work. No question. Yeah, I, I guess I would be most excited about in terms of in terms of these the, the people hitting the free agent market, I'd probably be most excited for Becky because I think there are a lot of women out there. You look at the AEW women's division, because you would just naturally assume that's kind of where she would end up. Um, and there are a lot of fun matches I think that she could have yeah. with a lot of different women there. Um, 
I guess I'd be most excited for her, but because of that, it makes me think that she's the most valuable to WWE. Like I, I think she's the least likely to go. Like I agree with both of you that I think overall we probably see all of them stay, but from a business standpoint, like there were just big free agents out there and the WWE essentially sat out. Like they made their offer. They weren't moving above it. Tony outspent them. So like, I do wonder if there comes a point with any of them, if there's too many zeros or that number is too big to where TKO is just like, we're good. Like, we don't need individuals. We had this company and we're going to roll with that. I, I think that'd be a bit of a mistake um, because that's going to set whether you back. it's right or wrong, but they, yeah. how they acted in free agency. Like they that, that is how they acted Will in Ospreay. free agency. That, yeah, that, that is how they acted in free agency for sure. But again, I, I could also see Becky walking away from wrestling. Like she's a mom now and she's got enough charisma. If she wants to pursue something in Hollywood, I think she could do that. Like she's becoming a big enough star where if that's worth something that she wants to do that, okay, we can't, you know, both, both me and dad is, as their kid gets older, can't both be gone Monday nights and wrestling every Monday and then hitting the house shows on weekends. Like we, I need a little bit more flexibility. So somebody's home with the kid. I, I could understand where, okay, let's pivot and do something else. And she absolutely could. I mean, she's obviously now they got the best selling book. If she wanted to take a crack at Hollywood, I think she could. She could, and but Becky told us on Good Karma Wrestling that she's not in it for the championship. She wants to tell more stories. Mm -hmm. She didn't say where, didn't yep. say where, but she says that she wants to tell more stories. I'm I'm booking right now, and and not an AEW, not an AEW. Maybe Vince's new company, his new there venture in 2025. Um, Seth and Becky as a a power couple going in. I we don't very see that very often in wrestling. But Seth and Becky together just wreaking havoc together as a couple. We get well, this all the time. You get these married couples and they're never together. Like we're pretending like they're not married. Imagine those two together as, you know, fighting off everybody. That'd be interesting. Well, and with Matt Cardona's peck injury, there seems to be an opening for King of the Indies. Yeah. You know, you get those two versus Nick Gage and Macchiato. <laughs> Nick Gage. <laughs> Do you remember in StarCast, we saw him sitting over there in the corner, and Brian says, what do you think? You know how Brian is. Gage. Oh, yeah. He moves the head around. Well, what do you think? And it's like, no. <laughs> I'm afraid of him. <laughs> it could be a We're no for talking, me, dog. Not, not <laughs> to Game Changer Wrestling's Nick Gage. He looks like he has a knife. <laughs> probably just a pizza cutter it's fine oh no thanks no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what do we got <laughs> what do we got at number two this week brian <laughs> all right we talked some women's wrestling monday night we found out rhea ripley vacating the women's title due to a shoulder injury expected to miss a few months we will crown a new champion on monday so who should be the new women's champ First and foremost, bummer that this ended up happening because, uh, again, she's not just the star of the women's division. She's one of the stars of the company. Like, uh, carrying Monday Night Raw on a very consistent basis uh, over the course of this past year, one of the most featured superstars, you know, uh, on, other than Cody Rhodes. Like, yeah. she has been on an unbelievable run, has been red hot, everything she does. And, and again, I bring this up all the time. It's amazing how much she's cheered considering how much her on-screen partner is booed, right? Everybody hates Dom. Everybody loves Rhea and like somehow still love that they're together. I, I, I'm not quite sure how we feel about it as a fan base, but it's just, it's such a bummer that this ended up happening and happening not even in a match, but in the backstage yeah. portion of the segment. It's, it's really a bummer that it happened. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting when she comes back because she's going to get a roar. I oh mean, they, I mean, they, she she already does, but it just when you know when you go away and you come back and the crowd's just going to be so into you, it's going to be great. So you know, it, it's funny how we've had this love hate thing with Liv Morgan since yeah. the beginning of this show, right? Uh -huh. It's so funny because it's always when she comes up, we've said, "Hey, Liv needs to have a little bit more fire," or "Liv's a champion." I don't get it. It's always been the two, right? But the one consistent thing I've told you guys is that with Liv Morgan, I just want to know, A, what is a Liv Morgan? What is she supposed to be? And B, show some fire. 
give us something. I always thought she was better as a heel than a baby face. Yeah. And so clearly with this, she becomes a, a heel. She's healthy now. I think that that she could be right in place as a red hot heel as the women's champion because she, on purpose, <laughs> inter, uh, injured uh, Rhea Ripley and that pull apart. Yeah, I mean, they already made the uh, the merch like Drew of like celebrating that she injured Rhea. That promo on Monday was great with her saying, "Hey, how come no one felt bad when she injured me?" Like they are telling a great story. I agree, her as champion and then Rhea getting the comeuppance when she returns would be awesome. But if this is a long absence, can you keep live that hot as a heel for that long as champion? I think you if have to try because who else like six months? Who right now on the women's yep. side is like Becky's? We haven't seen Becky on TV, yeah, right since since Mania. So I don't think Becky's suddenly going to come back and win it because you can put the belt on Becky whenever you want. Um, Nia Jax, I know they interviewed her backstage on Monday. Eh. I'd be eh. fine with her getting a short run. No, like she was left off Mania. The work she's put in recently. Yeah, I, I guess. The, the way that they presented Liv Morgan, I would be shocked if they went any other way than Liv Morgan because she's right. the only one who's, again, and, it, and it's just kind of tough because they're in this and this happens every year in the little lull they have leading up yeah. to the draft. Like, okay, <laughs> we know the draft is coming, but we have to build for the PLE as well. So trying to figure out how to balance all of this because you don't want to do anything long-term in case you make a last second decision to kind of split up the, you know, any sort of story that you're going with to try to balance things out between Raw and SmackDown. So it, the thing that makes the most sense to me right now, looking at the roster, is Liv Morgan. It's the only thing that makes sense. It's the only direction I think they can go. And if you if you can't keep Liv hot for eight months, then, then so be it. But I think you have to strike while the iron is hot right now because Liv Morgan checking off names. I think you can make this last a while. Her checking off names as the champion – of people on her revenge tour, I think you can keep that hot for quite a bit. Yes, and we're in the era of long title reigns. There's no yeah. more short title reign anymore, Brian. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what happens? Except is, for Sami that... Zayn, that he's giving that up soon. <laughs> <laughs> Almost very close, very <laughs> close on Monday night. Um, and I think Miz and our truth go with the tag titles Monday also. Yes. Um, I I think that with Liv Morgan. I think that she can really be a hottie. And besides, on one side, Bailey's a baby face. Mm -hmm. So on the other show, yeah. you got to have a, a heel women's champion. So I think that that fits the bill for Liv Morgan. And, and by the way, I mean, whatever you think of Liv Morgan, it's instant heat. When people see her, you got rid of mommy. And people yeah. will remember that. Uh, on television, on the road, she's going to get booed heavily. And that's what you want. She wins the championship. She injures Rhea Ripley. The story's already built. So you can well while Rhea is injured, build up Liv Morgan again, but this time as a heel. Yeah, I think that'll be great. The other one I would throw out there is just take advantage of the time is Tiffany Stratton. Like we saw what she could do, and they've sort of cooled her off. She hasn't been on TV as much. Just strap the rocket to her back right now. It's like, all right, there's an opening. Let's go. Yeah, and again, you could that. do that. Again, they they've been very vague with their plans of what's going to happen on Monday, yeah. other than we're crowning a new champion. So I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means they're putting together a tournament. I don't know if that means they're going to have championship opportunity matches and eventually they're going to wrestle in France. I have no idea what that means. So with, again, with the draft literally coming up a right. week from tomorrow, like you could do that because when she came out and granted she lost and I understand why she lost to Naomi because they, you know, they, they want to do Naomi and, and Bailey and, it's too early to throw Tiffany Stratton into a match against Bailey when Bailey just became champ. Well, yes, as over is as Tiffy is, you could give it a shot if you really right. wanted to. I, I don't think she's as as crazy as this sounds because she was so incredibly hot going into WrestleMania. They just didn't have anything for her because she was a late call up into the WrestleMania game. Like as as good as she was going. Liv Morgan to me is hotter right now because of the injury angle, because of everything Jay Hood just said with you just injured our favorite. We're going to yeah. be pissed at you for a long time. And, and Tiffany is a heel, but kind of straddles the line of being a cool heel where she also gets cheers because people love her. Right. No, that's fair. And she's hot. Yes. That <laughs> that, that, so, 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 so women can hate her, but guys can love her. So there's going to be that mixed reaction. As soon as as soon as um, she can get out of this 
50 50 booking with Naomi, then you can strap that strap that rocket on her backside. You can you can do that. I um I don't like, by the way, for the record, I do not like this Bailey Naomi dynamic. I just I think that's some I think that's a miss in the Triple H era because it's like, so you're gonna give me baby face versus baby face, you're gonna make me choose? Don't do that. They're doing Don't it for do a filler pay per view. That's what that is. They're like, Don't all right, we'll throw it out there, yeah. and then we'll just get yeah. us over to SummerSlam. Where Don't does do Naomi that. fit in this whole bloodline thing, by the way? She does not. She's on the tree. Her name's there. Nope. Nope. We're, we're supposed to pretend like she's not part of it. Nope. <laughs> Dwayne, put her there. Wait, that counts. You know, here, here's here's why this is dumb, right? So your your uh, husband gets his ass whooped. You don't, and then the next segment, you pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> like, like you don't, you don't, you don't come to his aid. You don't help him. You don't do anything. But she's the, the face. Segment, he's a heel. They're not no, married on TV because that's see. That's the that's the point. <laughs> right. Your husband gets beat down, and you're just concerned about Bailey and Trip, Tiffany Stratton. What about your husband? What about okay. no? His life is falling apart, but she's got a championship opportunity. All right, we gotta, we gotta weigh, you know, balance this whole thing out. Well, great, great priorities on the part of Naomi. <laughs> In terms of Monday, how do we think they're doing it? Because I feel like you know, a couple years ago, if this were Vince, it'd be a battle royal, and they'd forget about it. Like, <laughs> does it end at backlash? Do we get a one night tournament, or is that just wishful thinking? Um, I mean, I. Given how they established the, and, and we're going to have the number one contender match tomorrow um, for, for Cody yeah. Rhodes's title. Like I, I'd like to think that they're going to throw it together a couple of matches again, whether it's a true bracketed tournament or whether it's a couple of triple threats or a couple of four, you know, fatal four ways where two winners come out and then they end up wrestling at backlash. Okay. Ultimately, I think that's the way they go. Like, I don't think we're getting a women's championship match on Monday. I think they're just going to unveil whatever the plan is. Maybe we get the first of the two semifinal matches, whatever it is, because backlash is going to be here before you know it. Um, but I don't think we're actually going to be getting a champion um, on Monday. I don't know. I feel like maybe I'm reading too much into their wording, but I thought they said a new women's world champion will be crowned on Raw. That's what it says. I thought I saw the graphic on Raw, that same graphic that you just yeah. said. A new women's world champion will be crowned is what the graphic says. What's the number one rule in wrestling? <laughs> Card is subject to change. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Could be. I just I, I thought I saw the same thing, and I thought – is it a match or is it a new belt? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they just came, they, they just gave it a new belt. They just well, literally did know, this like six months ago. Well, I mean, it's it's a new era now. Yeah, so been here. Yeah, new, new era. era, new titles, which means everybody has the little logo of WWE in the middle yep. and then whatever's around it. That's all mm-hmm. it is. That's the new era. I think it's all fascinating though. Without Rhea Ripley, guys, I think it's. Uh, but and by the way. Not much slippage. People love Rhea Ripley, but now this is an opportunity for others to stand up yep. and, and deliver. Oh, and, and I think they will deliver, by the way. Yes. Um, but again, I, I guess I thought if, if they're actually crowning and going to have a champ, like, wouldn't they announce that match, like, at some point this week? Yeah, that would make sense. Like, I wonder if they're just still figuring it out. Yeah. All right. What I, do we got I, at number three? I, yeah. <laughs> What do we got well, through this week? Bro? Plenty of title matches this weekend in AEW as AEW Dynasty heads to St. Louis. We don't know what's going to main event. So let's pull out the pencil. What should main event AEW Dynasty on Sunday? All right. Just running through the card here real quick to remind everyone. Um, so there are 10 matches and only two do not have championships on the line. As the acclaimed are taking on the Bullet Club Gold, I believe that's going to be on zero hour. Yes, as it's going to be a winner's take all for the trios and ROH World Six Man Tag Team <laughs> Championships. Uh, we so have you're not main eventing with that one? No, I'm not main eventing with that one. No, I believe, like I said, I believe that's the pre show. Yes, they did um, announce that zero hour. Yes. Uh, so Hook and Jericho for the FTW Championship. Oh, Roderick hopefully Strong. that is also zero hour. Roderick Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly for the International Championship. Uh, Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale for the TBS Championship. Okada mm-hmm. versus Pac for the Continental Championship. Young Bucks mm-hmm. and FTR in what they are now added as a ladder match for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Timeless Tony Storm taking on Thunder Rosa for the AEW Women's World Championship and Samoa Joe 
versus Swerve Strickland for the AEW World Championship. Of course, then the non-title matches are the trios match featuring Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black and what is probably going to be the match of the night, Will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson. Um, uh, gentlemen, this is one of the best cards, if not the best card AEW's ever had. And I'm not being Tony. God, this card. I'm not. I'm not trying to be Tony Khan when I say that. I'm just saying, like, I mean, look at that card from top to bottom. It's so good. It is, it is un- for, for a, a dynasty, not not for Wembley, not double for or Chicago. nothing. Yeah, not not for like Arthur Ashe. I'm, I'm talking about like this is unbelievable, and this is what AEW does best. They're putting together a super card, and this is amazing. Like, Okada versus Pac is just, like, lost yes. in the middle of this thing. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be sitting – I'm going to be sitting on my couch on Sunday night just kind of going, all right, what, uh, well, I guess I can't get up now. Okada's about to wrestle yeah. Pac. Okay, well, well, no, I can't no, – now I've got – I've got Julia like versus Willow. Justify Jericho Hook is it's a bathroom break. Like, you have to give fans an opportunity to get up and go grab popcorn and go to the bathroom, and that matches that. Because there's nothing else in this card where you should get up. But, like, I don't want to get up for that because I love Hook, and I'm hoping he beats the sh- ever-loving crap out of Jericho so we can just get away from him at this point. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, guys, it's such a waste, that Hook, Jericho. Out of all, well, yeah, it's, a, it's a great card. And then you get to that match. The build's sloppy. I was Doesn't so hoping sense. they'd avoid that temptation. Like they could have just not added that. You know, I mean, so Hook goes over. Now, what does that mean? Right. Hook's already over. He doesn't have to beat Chris Jericho. Like, but whatever. It's not going to spoil what I think is going to be an unbelievable card. The the main event uh, with with Joe and Swerve has so much juice in it. It's it's not for Swerve. It's for Joe to establish himself as a W champion. I mean, Swerve's already over as a number one of the best baby faces in the company. This is for Which is Joe to establish himself. Right. <laughs> well, this is this is for Joe to establish himself as champion. He looks good with the title, but we haven't seen him in the ring enough. This is going to be the best one of the best. It, here's the thing: it is going to be the main event. It still won't be the best match on the card. The, the, well, no, because we already know what the best match on the card is. Like, good luck to everybody else. Like I mentioned, Okada <laughs> Pack. Like that's going to be great. Like Roderick Strong versus Kyle yes. O'Reilly is going to be not even sneaky good. We just all know it's going to be good, but it's just none of it's going to live up to Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay. It's just not going to live up to it. But the, again, the crazy part of your statement was six months ago this man was threatening babies, <laughs> and now he's the most over baby face in the country. Or, he in, broke in into another man's home and went in the child's room. <laughs> That's amazing. And, but was a baby face while that too? Because people, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, like he's taking out multiple security guards at once. Like I don't even know how to describe what he did to end Dynamite last night. Yeah, well, in okay. fairness, let me, let me, um, Rhea me, Ripley was taken out. Yeah, Rhea Ripley was yeah. taking out security guards on Monday Night Raw too. Not like that, Gabe. Let me just tell you something. Yes, it's a banger of a card, but boy, a risky go home. Yeah. They did some stuff that you don't ever do on a go home because you don't want anyone injured before the pay per view. They did some risky shit before the show. I'm like, wow, he's doing that on Wednesday. The <laughs> show's Sunday. Careful now. Yeah, I mean, I favorite okay. Claudio felt unnecessary that close to the show. You didn't need that to sell that pay-per-view. I, I was surprised. They did some stuff that you know. We haven't seen this since the 90s. That kind of risk being out there before a pay-per-view. I was surprised. So, I mean, I'm, to answer the question. I'm not going to complain title. about right. Claudio versus Osprey. Right? Oh, no. I'm very happy we got it. That was amazing. But uh, but but my point is is that you risk injury. Oh, I'm glad we had the match. That's a, that's a, we are talking about how great the card is. And what I'm saying is is that. Hey, you could talk talk me into it. You don't have to give me a twenty minute well, banger to convince me. Again, not that not that we should be comparing, especially right before Mania. But like the Raw and SmackDown before Mania was basically promo after promo after promo. A couple of wrestlers who aren't on the card, promo promo. A couple more wrestlers who aren't on the card, promo because they wanted to protect and needed to protect everyone. So your point is well taken. To your, to answer the question, the hood. You said the world title match is made of ending. I don't feel like it is. They've put so much into Brian and Danielson and Swerve and Joe has come up a little bit. I just think Swerve and Danielson, or sorry, Danielson and Osprey, that can't be followed. So you might as well just end the night with it. No, uh, you, you know, you know what you follow it with? Hook Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you want, you want to start your pay-per-view, right? 
Osprey Danielson started off. <laughs> Follow that, bitches. Follow that. <laughs> but no one will. So you'll set the bar here, and then everything else is below it the rest of the well, night. No, but again, then you then you cleanse the palate with Hook Jericho, and bam, we're right. We, we reset, and we restart. Just give them zero hour then. Let them go the full hour before the pay-per-view. <laughs> They're going to be two separate shows. Do an Iron so Man other match. guys have a shot at match of the night. Do an Iron Man match and give yeah. away for free. Yes. <laughs> give everyone else a shot. Otherwise, well, we already know what match of the night is. Give Osprey Danielson an hour and then, well, don't need the pay-per-view. So long. <laughs> still a good card. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's still Swerving Joe and Okada and Pac, <laughs> House of Black. Like that, those all deliver. Oh man, <laughs> but they, I mean, I mean again, out, outside of what they did at Revolution, very typically, AEW. What, is it safe to say seventy five percent of the time the World Championship main when, when the World Championship is on the card, yeah, it main events the pay per view. Again, they've done different things on occasion. Obviously, they built Revolution around Sting and being his last match. So that had to main event, especially when he was going to win. You built it all around that, so that made sense. At different times, they've done the um, uh, stadium stampede match has main evented because just chaos everywhere, and they do all those things. And it's become such a you know an AEW type of match. But I think that you want to keep that AEW championship in that main event slot. Like you have constantly made sure that it is – that one, right? Like, hey, this is still the thing that matters the most in our company. Yes, we've put on some great bangers before this, but at the end of the night, the AW World Championship is what's on the line, and it's what the main event is. Yeah, looking through, the, if the world title's on the card, like looking at their past main events, it main events the show. The only time it hasn't, like you said, is Sting or those multi men matches where it is Stadium Stampede, Anarchy in the Arena, things like that. But this is one of those matches that, I don't know if we ever expected we would get like between Brian's health and Osprey being overseas. Like this is happening. Like it just is going to be so damn good that I feel like you need another way. And the other thing, if we're ending with the world title and you mentioned it last week, could you think Joe's going to win? That's sort yeah. of a dud way to end the pay-per-view. Is it? I mean, yeah. Joe choking him out. Swerve winning is a moment. Swerve winning the title, that's the main event. Like, that's an awesome way to end it. Joe is like, all right. Joe's still well, over. He well, we is. Seen, well, we haven't seen the match yet. Let's see the match. No, the match will be great. But, yeah. like, you're going to take away from the fans that, like, Swerve get in that moment. I don't know. Just feels like a letdown. It just is. Here's the thing. Dynasty is just a pay-per-view, right? It's not one of their tentpole events. That that's why Swerve's not going to win, is because it's Dynasty, unless it's something I don't know. <laughs> I, I think this feels like Hogan Rock, and then was that followed up by Triple H, Jericho? I can't remember, but remember in Toronto, right? right? <laughs> remember, look, yeah. look that up, Ryan. Was that so? It was so Triple H. I'm sorry, it was Hogan and Rock. And it was just an amazing match. And then whatever I had to follow that just didn't matter. People were leaving. Like, like, <laughs> so, so that's why Hogan Rock and Okada and uh, Brian is like, put it out at the end. Yeah. Uh, so Hogan Rock uh, in WrestleMania X8 yeah. was followed by Jazz defeating Trish Stratus and Lita in a triple threat match. And then the main event was Triple H Jericho. That women's match is solid six minutes and 16 seconds. Women's wrestling in the <laughs> 90s slash 2000s. Long. Yeah. <laughs> we had three entrances. They had to get their stuff in. Yeah, but I'm I'm just so impressed. And, and also, I'd like to shake the hand of whoever put this this card together. I mean, what a great job by whoever put this card together for AEW. Whoever put these storylines together, I just want to shake his hand. What a great job. I mean, Thunder Rosa, just as a, a small example. Thunder Rosa comes back and she's had some really good matches. She's healthy mm -hmm. now. And and so she looks like a viable contender. She's going to lose, but looks like a viable contender to Tony Storm. But the build to that was really good. I look at Osprey and Danielson. You can understand that. Young Bucks and FTR. Little, not sure what's going to happen there. I like the intrigue. It sounds like the Young Bucks are going to win, but you just don't know. Right. It's very interesting how that's worked. So I think the build for a number of these matches has been very, very good. And whoever's booking this, congratulations. And I think to that point, like you mentioned uh, Hogan Rock and WrestleMania 18, like 
looking at all these matches, like outside of Jericho Hook, like you're gonna go back, like, oh, I could rewatch any of this. And you look at WrestleMania 18, and like that match was on the same card as Rikishi, Scotty Tuhati, and Albert versus Mr. Perfect, uh, Lance Storm and Test, uh, Maven versus Gold Dust. <laughs> Maven, wow, <laughs> Maven won. Maven did win. Billy and Chuck beating the APA, the Dudleys, and the Hardys. <laughs> All that happened on the same night. Like, what we get Sunday is a little bit different than that card. Yes. Well, and, and with the build, I will say this, especially in the women's division, they have found a way where around these championships as well, like you have Mercedes Monet hanging around the TBS championship and being like, oh, hey, by the way, I'm still relevant. You have Deanna Perrazzo still hanging around the championship saying, saying, hey, by the way, I'm still relevant. So they've done a, they've, they've started to figure out a way of, oh, we can tell stories that aren't just about the pursuit for the, or they, these are still pursuit for championships, yeah. but not the only pursuit for the championship, right? They've, they've done a good job of kind of sliding because that was the big criticism of the women's division. Like they could only, the only thing that they could seem to do is, well, the only thing we can do is tell the story of this championship match. And that's all we can do right now. And they're starting to expand that out, which I also think also think deserves a little tip of the cap. And even like it's around the picture, the title picture, but like the Tony Storm, Mariah May stuff, like adding mm-hmm. different things, Mariah May getting her moments. Like this is the best the women's division has been in a long time in AEW. Yeah. I, I just think it's been really, really special. Um, yeah. This, I'm just looking forward to it because St. Louis is going to have a banger. I think there might be a few tickets available. What if I make that drive down? Okay. What do you think? Four, about three and a half, four hours. Turn around, do the morning show the next day. <laughs> that, that, that's about the time you'd be regretting it. Hour number three, driving back to Chicago, going, "What did I do?" But then you start replaying Danielson and yeah. Osprey in your head again. You're like, oh, "Okay, I, all right, we'll, we'll, that we'll sacrifice." That thing's not over until eleven thirty central. Uh huh. I mean, that, that that it's gonna be a long night. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be, but it's gonna be fun though. And and by the way. Out of all the drama around AEW, the thing that we can always take solace in is that the wrestling is solid. I mean, I know people like it's more popular to talk about what they're what they aren't, attendance and all this other stuff, but what about the in-ring? The women yes. and men are working hard. Hard. I'll tell you what, I mean, where were they? Where were they last night? Um uh last night they were um they were in uh, Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. So they're in Indianapolis and, you know, I don't know if there were, what, 3,000, 3,500 people there. That crowd was hot, man. That crowd was great. And that's what this card feels like where it's like, hey, like, don't worry about all that other stuff. Like, this is what we can do. And I wish they did more of this. Like, you don't need to release tapes. You need to just put on shows like this, which they have the roster to do. Like, they can do this every pay-per-view and switch it up. Like, they're that deep on this roster. And I understand the the appeal, and, and this is probably what they still want to do, because you do still want to tell stories within professional wrestling. But sure. the big criticism that has also come out of all of this, just generally motioning <laughs> over here, of all the things that have happened over the last handful of weeks, like the two people in terms of listening to CM Punk and then listening to, um, to Brandy Rhodes – like, okay, like Cody or, or CM Punk saying, I was sold that this was an alternate to WWE. Like, it wasn't going to be WWE. You know, it was just going to be something else. And when Brandy starts saying, yeah, it started becoming something we didn't think we wanted it to be. Maybe trying to find a way to get back to those roots of what you were when the company started because they were hot. Yes. I think that's that's a good thing. And I feel like they're starting to kind of mix in what they were at the beginning along with, again, meaningful stories that go behind the banger matches that they can put on on a random dynamite rampage or collision. Right. Because that's the thing. Like they have the roster and they have, I guess the freedom even where as hot as WWE gets, they're not going to have matches. Like we're going to see Sunday, like the style, the violence, things like that. Like, so lean in on that and go into it. And hopefully that this card going into it has the capability to do that. Yeah, Gabe, at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum is a little bit over 3,000 people, which which is 3,000 more than IUPUI gets for their basketball games. <laughs> um, so, so if you're, you're familiar with the arena. Oh, I'm, I'm an old Horizon League guy. You will know. I've been in that. That place is a dump. <laughs> that place is a dump. But, but you know how we do in the Midwest, though, man. I mean, oh, it, yeah. That crowd was loud because it's like, oh, wrestling's coming into town. 
Milwaukee, Chicago, Indianapolis, Detroit. You know how we do it, man. It was loud because they're like, yeah, we get live wrestling here, especially in this dead ass building. <laughs> so it, so it, was, it was perfect. It was a great crowd. And that's what they needed. They were hot for Hook Jericho last night. That's oh, how good of a yeah. crowd they were. We God ended to see Taz take a bump, though, and I use that term very loosely. Yeah, I, I, I love how you know they tried to save it on commentary. Well, everybody knows he's been dealing with a knee injury for a long time. Oh, I, I, I did know. not know yeah. that, but thank you, Excalibur, for explaining why that was such an awkward fall from the human suplex yeah. machine. <laughs> let me let me translate. Dude has a Lloyd's of London contract where he can't be touched. Yeah, that it was. That's what that is. Rick Rude had one of those. It's like, hey, hey, brother, I can hit you, but you can't hit me because of the insurance. Because if they see me taking a bump, I lose my insurance. So, like, uh, no, I did not know Taz had a bad knee. <laughs> I don't know why he said that. <laughs> like, bad neck because he yeah, broke his yeah. neck, right? Yep. Yeah. Very yeah. familiar. Thought, Very familiar I, with the neck issue. Yeah, not as familiar thought, with the knee. I, I thought that was funny that he brought that up. Like the the, the old trick knee of Taz. <laughs> Like, like, that's funny because when he put the, the sleeper on Cody, you remember this in Jacksonville during yeah. the pandemic? He got behind. He, no knee problems then. <laughs> <laughs> he got it's Cody since then. He hurt his knee since then. Oh, oh well. Okay. Uh, what do we got in news and notes this week, Brian? All right. We'll talk WrestleMania as we have a lot in a new location. Maybe Nick Khan speaking at the Sports Business Journal's World Congress of Sports event says they're not ready to announce the location for WrestleMania 41 just yet. He does say we can assume it won't be in an outdoor East Coast stadium again. Vegas is in the mix. He also added it will not go head-to-head with the Final Four next year. Which makes sense, starting with that statement. Because before, when WrestleMania was just one night and it was on Sunday, like you didn't have to worry about that. But now, when it's both nights and you're going that weekend, WrestleMania night one goes head-to-head, and those games start late. Yeah. Those games start late in the Final Four. So you're going almost directly head-to-head. Um, obviously didn't really affect much with what WWE had going on this year, but it's a big major sporting event. Why not go the next weekend? I mean, like the the only thing that's happening the the weekend after is the masters. And if somebody wants to watch the golf during the day, it's not like they're teeing it up with glow balls at Augusta national. Like it's not going directly head to head. People are going to be able to watch WrestleMania. So that makes sense. I'm a little worried it's not going to end up in Minneapolis in the Twin Cities, which I was hoping for being in Milwaukee could go up. It was going to be easy. Kind of seems like maybe Vegas is going to be the uh, the location for WrestleMania 41. Minneapolis seems more like a Survivor Series type spot. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, yeah, as Midwest guys, I think we were looking forward to that trip. Um, so, But it seems more like Atlanta. Seems more like Vegas, seems more like Toronto, the, the traditional places where the Final Four would go in dome stadiums. So that makes a lot of sense. I think that they looked at Philly and said, boy, this is ridiculous. It's 35 degrees, 40 yeah. degrees. You were there. It was chilly, uh, even with the real feel. Uh, it was cold. Uh, so it's. I think they got to go back to tr- the traditional ways of doing it in a dome. And I think also Vegas is almost a redemption. Remember, they tried running like a money in the bank the same weekend as UFC and ended up having to move it out of Allegiant. Like, do a mania there. It seems like they're gearing more towards partnering with UFC, so you could probably throw a UFC fight in there that weekend as well. Just take over Vegas. Like, that's where it's going to be. Makes a ton of sense. Yep. NBC News with an article on what Vince McMahon has been up to recently. Some highlights from it. John Cena and Dwayne Johnson still in touch with Vince. Both of them no comment in the article. Triple H and Stephanie do not talk to him about, quote, company matters. Vince also in the article through a lawyer continues to deny all allegations against him. Whew. Uh, also uh, non-compete. So I guess he could start his own wrestling company, um, yeah. you know, coming up here anytime soon. Maybe that's what he's selling off all of his TKO stock for, I, which actually, I mean, that's, that's more of a joke. I can't imagine him trying to do that at his age, but he's also <laughs> Vince McMahon. So yeah. I feel like the clientele and the people that would then follow him is uh Control your narrative. Is that still a thing? I feel like that company. Oh, 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 oh. So you, so you saying, so you're saying AOP and Elroyd will yeah. be there. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it feels like, it feels like that, you know, cup of tea would be his department. I would say that with as many free agent wrestlers that are out there, if Vince started something, he's got the money, they would follow. 
Yeah, absolutely. Even though we know everything about Vince, even with his dogs and cats that he travels with now, <laughs> uh, as we read in the article, traveling with dogs and cats and bringing them to friends. I, but as we talked about, Gabe, Gabe, Vince has only can do one. He's only done one thing, and that's professional wrestling. He's failed in everything else: mm-hmm. World Bodybuilding Federation and um, XFL. XFL. XFL twice. Uh, he, he's trying to be a promoter for boxing in the past. That was way in the 80s. He's tried a lot of different things, but the one thing he can do is wrestling. And I think that that's what he's going to continue to try to build somehow, some way. And it's it's really unfortunate, but here's a guy here that still has a lot of litigation pending. Hopefully, uh, if it's all true, he will be under the jail. Some injury news. Sean Ross Sapp reports Adam Cole is, quote, not very close to returning to the ring. He has been taken off the road as the travel was actually slowing down his rehab process. In the WWE, Big E providing a neck update two years after suffering the injury. He said things are unchanged, not cleared, may never be, but he is, quote, free of pain, immensely happy, and otherwise healthy. Life is good. Love to hear that for Big E. Um, bummed, obviously, about the, you know, maybe he's never cleared, but the fact that he is healthy enough that he feels great, that's huge because that was a really scary injury when it happened. Um, do I, I hope for something similar that we've seen with Soraya and Adam Copeland, not saying that he goes to AEW, but they were able to come back from obviously tough neck injuries and eventually wrestle again. I'm, I'm hoping that's the case for him if he wants to do it. If he doesn't, like, Biggie, you've given us a lot, man, over the years, and I'm just glad that you you are healthy right now um, in terms of that. For, for Adam Cole, man, that sucks because, again, everything with Undisputed Kingdom just kind of feels empty right now, mm-hmm. and that's because yeah. he was the heart and soul of that, clearly, and he just can't be around. I guess when it comes to Adam Cole, we're just looking for big comebacks, right? We talked we talked earlier about Rhea Ripley when she returns. Oh man, what that's going to be like? Adam Cole the same way. When he's healthy, it's going to be great. Remember, we've been away. We, we've um, uh, dealt with Adam Cole being away for a while before he came to AEW, um, and so it's just good for him to be able to go through the rehab process because how can we miss him if he doesn't go away? Right. And so hopefully that'll work out for Big E. Gabe, I mean, it's, you know, he's done so much that just being around the WWE as an announcer, that works for me. I know that he's like the big voice of the New Day for many years, but, you know, it's just unfortunate what he's going through right now. He doesn't have to come back in the ring to satisfy me. He's done a ton already in his career. Finally, in news and notes, 66-year-old Onita is ready for another Japanese death match in August. He has issued a challenge. Either of you gentlemen want to guess who he's challenging in August in Japan. Uh, uh, Eddie Kingston. Not quite. A little too young there, Hood. He did this from the graveyard. He's challenging 83-year-old Dory Funk Jr. August in Japan. <laughs> you there? You going to head to Japan for that? I will do our social media for the that. Oct- the octogenarian <laughs> death match. <laughs> Dory can go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie will be there front row. Don't worry. Oh, I don't think we were worried about that. Maybe, maybe we just oh become God. friends with Eddie, and he can do the work for us. <laughs> oh my God, Dory Funk! Wow, I know he's still getting in the ring for his school and everything. All he's gonna do is just these boring forearm smashes. That's what he's gonna do. The bolo. That's all he's gonna do. I mean, it, 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 it just oh my God, Meltzer will be there front row yeah. to check it out. Dave 83 Meltzer. years old, so he'll uh, be older than Flair in that match. Oh, my God. Sold out, brother. Sold yeah. out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Still rust at 83. That, I mean, that makes Flair like a spring chicken. <laughs> that's God, that's going to give Flair ideas. That's oh, really gonna Flair already has those ideas. Yeah, and this is only going to help him. <laughs> 83. What'd you guys uh, I don't know what his birthday is. I forgot to look that up. Like he might be 84 by August. Oh my god! So you know, look forward to that in August in Japan. What'd you yeah. guys have as your actual matches of the week? I guess Not we can look one? forward to that one in August, <laughs> making yeah. the list. But what, well, let's focus on this week. What'd you guys have down for your matches of the week? Well, Gabe, I'll throw out the Osprey versus Claudio. I'll throw okay. that out as the first card. Yeah, I mean, right. well. 
right, again, me... it, there's the Osprey Plus category, and then there's list. everyone else. Well, like, we, we well, found out that they did this, and we're like, okay, why? I don't know, yeah. but cool. Awesome. Sign yeah. me up for more. He reversed the swing. Like, he sat up while being swung. <laughs> God. It, it, it just – it is amazing, Will Ospreay. He has the room and the time to do this stuff. It doesn't. This is no skin off of Claudio's nose. I mean, it starts no. there. Claudio is fantastic so many too. Yeah, you just keep giving right. great dance partners. It's uh, <laughs> so good. What's the consolation prize? Mm. Uh, so I enjoyed. I thought the Styles KO and uh, Rey Mysterio triple threat on SmackDown from last Friday was fantastic. The ending was spectacular. Mm -hmm. Like the way that AJ hit the. Uh, Avalanche Styles Clash and the way they rolled off of KO right into the pin, I thought was great. Um, I'd even rewind in that match going back to the KO entrance, like him breaking the fourth wall, like, hey, we've been shooting these really cool entrances. I want to do one of those. <laughs> and then knocking the punk shirt off, like, that was awesome. Yeah, walking around with the Tigers and then gets <laughs> back there and tells Bruce to hit his music. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's completely. <laughs> Bruce and like Jamie Noble's back there. Like, Jamie, <laughs> it's like, Jamie Noble is, is that you, Jamie, back there? What's up, Jamie? Bruce, hit the music. Spend my days. It's, it's funny. <laughs> oh man! And by the way, I know you saw this too. He does hold up the Tigers belt. Thought he's gonna get a pop. It was more like, uh, yeah, Tigers. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, another one but, I throw out there from Saturday: Tony Storm versus Zumi. It okay. was, as, and so so. What's interesting about that? I saw Zumi on. Uh, oh, by the way, I gotta give you my uh, Friday night uh, New Japan report. Ooh, I, gotta See, give I, you I that. thought, yeah, I, I haven't had a chance. I was I was excited once I saw Mox one. I have not had a chance to go back and watch it. No, I'm here for you. Don't worry about it. I got I got to give you that too. I, I got that to tell was you last week. Yes, I got to tell you, Mike. That's how long the week has been. I know. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, so it's it's that uh, Zane against Gable was, was Sammy, fantastic. Sammy Gable yeah. was true. I mean, and Sammy was like in his bag again, busting out old El Generico stuff, which is again more of that. Sammy, I love that. I love that again in this era of WWE, he is allowed to go because again, he was not allowed to two years ago, right. three years ago to be this version of Sami Zayn. It also still like melts my brain when you hear McAfee be like, oh, there's nothing generic about him. Like, this is raw? Like, you're allowed to say that? Like, it's still <laughs> so weird. Yes. You know what? If Vince was there, he wouldn't get it. No, bro, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> generic. Well, that's right. Goddamn. That's right. <laughs> he, wouldn't, he would have no clue what they're talking about. No clue. <laughs> One other out there out from last night, Mariah May and Perrazzo. Yes. Like just giving those two time and letting them go, like that's what they did. They delivered. But you get the gimmick, right? Mariah May is just doing Tony Storm bits. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's a tribute band. That's exactly what this is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a band. Like if, if, if we on the men's side get a uh, Will Ospreay tribute band, like I'd sign up for more of that. Yeah. It's just it's just funny because I it makes me badly want to see Tiffany Stratton versus um Tiffany Mariah Stratton May. versus Mariah May. Oh my god. <laughs> like now I want to see that match. <laughs> and now my Windy City Riot Report. <laughs> All right. Ah. So the home of the DePaul Blue Demons in the Chicago Sky, uh Wintrust Arena. I get there. And as I go through the doors, they scan my ticket. Oh, cry me a river. Oh, cry me a river. It's on the concourse. It's in the bathroom. It's at the beer line. It's in the arena. People could not wait to see Jack Perry. That I, I mean, I, this is a, a card that has John Moxley on it. Uh, you know, this is a card that's got all these great superstars. and But yet, we get Jack Perry. People could not wait to see Jack Perry in uh, come into the ring, and let me tell you something. You talk about heat, a mixed reaction. Hometown. Yes, if you go to our YouTube, I I, I shot some video, guys, uh, of the mixed reaction, a John Cena reaction for Jack Perry. He comes out with the Chicago flag on his shoulders, and it, this is like there's cheers and there's boos. There's FCM punk chants in Chicago. Half the crowd, the other crowd, the other crowd is like, you know, either saying. Uh, we want real glass. We want real glass or cry me a river. 
and do, they react for the middle of the card, by the way. And he lost <laughs> all that reaction, and and Jack Perry lost his match. Are you? I mean, it was it was unbelievable. Are you willing to say releasing the tapes was a good idea? Uh, no. Bringing so it back up, keeping well, it we'll top see. of mind. If he shows up Sunday, we'll see how he gets the reaction on Sunday. Like okay. Okay. now, so right now, releasing the tapes has done better business yeah. for two other companies. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When he That's starts, that. when Tony starts making money off of releasing the tapes, then and only then will I say, "Hey, maybe this was a good idea." All right. Yeah. Now, did it do good for New Japan business? Yes. But Tony's not in New Japan business. It's got to be right. for AEW business. Correct. Right? All right. All right. So all of this with Jack Perry, and he kept and he was trolling the audience. He put Shota Umino in a front face lock, like we saw in the back at Wembley. Got a reaction, right? Oh, the front face lock, right? <laughs> like, and, and and he did the. He tried to do the the CM Punk finisher. Oh, the GTS. To, to go to sleep. Did that. Got a reaction, right? All of this, everything, because he knew that if he did CM Punk stuff, that he'd get a, a reaction. It was fantastic. This was the sixth match of 11, and he got the biggest reaction. Middle of the card game. Wow. Middle of the card. And so your guy, John Moxley, I'm happy for, for you because your guy won the IWGP championship against Naito. Um, not a Naito fan, but I was happy for Moxley. Uh, and, he, and he, boy, you talk about a roar for him. Comes to the crowd, has a good match with Naito, wins the championship. That was awesome. Uh, here's one for you that should be in the uh, the wrestling newsletters. Zack Sabre Jr. defeats Matt Riddle for the World Television Championship, right? Zack Sabre Jr. wins. Matt Riddle takes the pinfall, rolls out of the ring, gives a thumbs up to the to the audience, and then leaves. Doesn't sell anything. Doesn't sell anything. Couldn't care less. He was At least like, he gave a thumbs what? up. What else do you want? He goes, I mean, but he's you lose. How about a little? Am I hurt? Nope. Bro and leaves. That was the shits. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that was something, man. That was something. So overall, uh, Chicago's own Mustafa Ali with another a great matchup. He was great, um, you know. But ultimately, you get the Bullet Club. A big reaction for Eddie Kingston. Of course, he brings in Homicide and Jeff Cobb. Our buddy Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb. on the card as well. So you know, Bullet Club comes in the new uh, Bullet Club. They win their matchup. That matches all over the place. Riot rules all over the place. So, I mean, a really good card for a Friday night. Awesome. Yeah, I think they've had success with that. This is the third, fourth year they've done that in Chicago, Windy City, right? They've had a lot of success there. Like a couple, they're going to be in D.C. They're just trying, mm -hmm. like, the North American spots. But, I mean, and by the way, I told my buddy who went with me, I was like, hey, they got the Japanese ring announcer, so don't ask me who's in the ring. Because <laughs> that's... It ain't gonna be in English. I'm just saying, like they didn't bring like they usually have like the, the Japanese and the English. Make, no, they just brought the Japanese guy. So I don't, I don't look at the screen because I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see what Mox does as the uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling champ because because he's on a very short list. Uh, in fact, he's the only person to now hold the WWE, AEW, and New Japan Pro Wrestling World Championships. Yes, and that's going to be a topic at some point because, my God, I mean, sonically, he's been able to do all this at the top as champion. It's impressive. So 6,000 people against SmackDown, by the way. It shows you yeah. how hot wrestling is. 6,000 people. I think that seats eight or nine. 6,000 mm -hmm. people for New Japan against SmackDown the same night as we're looking at our phone. Tama Tonga! It's all hold it up. <laughs> Tonga's there. Like, while we're watching New Japan, it was just a crazy night. It was great. Check out some of those videos that Jay hood shot uh, on our YouTube page. Some of the great videos that uh, Brian shot from WrestleMania, all available on our YouTube page. Comment, subscribe, youtube.com slash at good karma wrestling. And a huge thank you to our fan base as we are now up over 1000 subscribers to our page, something that means a lot to us. So thank you so much to all the fans out there for subscribing to our page, taking a look at our content. Hopefully we're uh, providing some entertaining fun around the world of professional wrestling with our conversations every Thursday as well. Thank you so much. I mean, from where we've come from to where we are right now, we are on a roll and it's because of you. So just thank you very much. We're going to try to add as much fun, as much content as possible. 
I just remember doing this by myself for a long time, just struggling along. And then, thank God, Brian and Gabe came into my life, so we can get to this. <laughs> to, so we can get to this right now. Uh, but I, you know, it speaks to our audience, but also speaks to the business, guys. Po- yeah. Post Vince, Brian, we're post Vince, and like everybody eats, right? From WrestleMania to AEW to TNA to New Japan and all the indies in between. We're going to try to go to as many events as possible because we know the product across the board is just hot. You said late last year that business was going to be booming in 24. We're happy to ride that wave and uh, talk about it every week. We're going to be talking about it again right here next week. Catch ya!